But I do want to throw at you some ideas about what the role of government ought to be. Because the government takes taxes, that's your dollars and mine, revenue resources, which are your property and mine as citizens. And quite frankly, I'd like to start off by inviting us all to rail against the constant uh, refrain of government to try to frame us as nothing other than taxpayers. I am a citizen. I'm a participant in this community. I am more than a taxpayer. And quite frankly, by only talking about taxpayers, what our government is doing is saying that the least among us, those who are at the lowest end of the income scale, who do not pay taxes, are not worthy of their consideration. And I'm going to invite you to, first of all, change that framing. We are citizens, and I want to be a citizen. For my government, I want my government to use its spending power, our collective wealth, to help equalize things, to help make things a little bit better for those who have a harder time uh, dealing with things. I represent about 25,000 health professionals, and I can't even name the entire gamut of them. There's about 240 different disciplines, but uh, in healthcare alone, there are 100,000 plus Albertans who are employed who make their living from the health care system, providing the care that we all need. And they work bl pretty bloody hard. They are predominantly women. They're, in my membership, about 75% are women. If you look at the United Nurses, for example, well over 90% of their members are women. And one of the things that we have been hearing from our right-wing governments forever recently is in the public sector, wages are higher than they are elsewhere in the private sector. Well, guess what? One of the things that unionized workers have done is to get to the point of pay equity. So that where we have primarily female occupations, we have worked to bring those wages to a level that recognizes their worth as equal to, to those occupations of men. That is one of the prime reasons why in the public sector you may see wages higher than in the average uh, private sector because we have pay equity uh, provisions and legislation indeed. So our members who are primarily women, who are citizens of this province, what do they need? They need child care. Imagine that. <laughs> see some nods? They need education for their kids. Right? When the kids get past high school, you want to be able to send them to post-secondary education. Yeah. And what have we been seeing? And, and Ricardo already touched a lot on that. And notwithstanding that the people I represent are health care providers, as we all know, and Ricardo touched on it as well, the social determinants of health are much more determinative of what our health is than is our health care system itself. I'm not saying don't spend on health care. Just to so get that clear. But having a job, having good education, having a house, being literate, having a social support system, those are what is going to make our life better. But then we do get to health care. And we want pharmacare so that when we need medications, that we can actually afford them. And some of the new medications that you see are hugely expensive. And I'm probably going to run out of time. Um, right? And we shouldn't pay that price all. <laughs> and and, and uh, we will hear more about that from, uh, from my friend Wendy, so I can move past that. Um, one of the startling stats, and Ricardo may have some of these as well, recently you may have heard Oxfam put out a stat that says, in this world, the 85 richest people have the same amount of wealth <coughs> as the lowest half of the population of the earth. Three and a half billion people have as much wealth as 85 individuals. That to me is absolutely grotesque and obscene and Ricardo already touched on that. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer and they want us to be envious of each other. So that's my next major point. What have we been hearing about? The attacks on workers, specifically unionized workers, have been designed to make us jealous of each other. They want to tell you that uh, public sector workers are overpaid, that we are leeches on your taxes, 
They want to say that unionized workers are the reason for the economic ills, not those bankers that actually caused everything to crash with their greed. And they want to say it's okay to pull us all down to the lowest common denominator. And currently, and one of the reasons why I would like to be more prepared, but is the, you will be hearing about our pension plan one more time, uh, the local authorities' pension plan that the minister today decided without so much as negotiating with the workers whose pension plan it is, the workers who contributed to that pension plan, and some of you are in the room, is saying, we are going to change it because we think we can't afford it anymore. And in his own uh, statement, he says, the people who bear the risk and the cost should be making the important decisions. And then he says, but I'm making this decision for you. Um, I have a bit of a problem with that particular situation. And so the position that we've taken as workers and as, as the union representative on, the, on this group, I, I presume to speak largely on behalf of workers generally, but unionized workers in particular, we want to make sure that we lift everyone up, right? How, when's the last time you heard a finance minister say, we don't have enough retirement security? Well, probably today, Minister Horner, right? <laughs> we, we've got a retirement security issue. We're not saving enough for our retirement, and we are in debt. And you hear it federally, you hear it provincially. So what is the answer from the provincial government? It is to try to pull people who have retirement security down, <laughs> rather than bringing everyone up. Let's figure out how to bring everyone up to a decent level of, of retirement security. Because our members are workers, they are going to have families, they are going to have friends, they are going to become seniors, they will become ill, they are just as human as everyone else, and they will require all of those services. And so, whether it's public transit, or post-secondary education, and that's particularly of interest of my, to my members because most of them have a requirement for post-secondary education. When they cut 7% out of the post-secondary education system, that hurts our members, our members and their families, and that hurts each and every one of us in this, in this province as it goes down. The other thing that you will be hearing more of, and that I want to rail out a little bit more, is the privatization. Ricardo touched on it. If you've got uh, five to ten thousand dollars, you can sign yourself up at the Copeland Clinic, and probably Wendy's going to touch on that a little bit, right? And you can get preferential access. And don't let anybody tell you it is anything but. Currently, within my membership, we are waiting for a uh, bid on privatization of labs in this, in the Edmonton area, whole scale, because our government insists that we can't afford it. However, you will also recall that the federal government recently said, we're going to send Alberta another billion dollars plus in federal transfer payments. Whether you think that's the calculation is fair or not is a whole other question. But Alberta is supposed to get a billion dollars more from the federal government specifically for health care. And what has Mr. Horn said yesterday? Don't expect us to spend it on health care because, you know, we have other priorities. And I think when we have waiting lists of years for, for, for important procedures, when we can't get our elders into dignified long-term care facilities, when we can't provide the care that we all need and deserve, then I think we need to hold our government to account. And uh, private-public partnerships, I'm going to steal from my friend Heather Smith's uh, statement, is this is the how to make privatization seem, uh, seem uh, palatable to you. They are nothing but picking public pockets because ultimately they're going to use your money to spend on profits for private corporations. And so, in the end, workers, my members, other union members, we have been trying to bring everybody up for the longest time. We have succeeded, and today I got this, this thing in the, on an email saying, here's, my, here's a card, as an objector to unions, I hereby direct my employer not to give me vacation pay, not to give me sick pay, not to give me benefits, right? So it's a spoof. I see a couple of horrified, horrified faces. It's a spoof, right? It's one of these, okay, the reverse of what we've always said. I'm a member of a union, therefore I have vacations, I have benefits, I have uh, sick leave, I have childcare, I have maternity leave, etc. And, you know, somebody has turned it around to, to reverse it, to say, dear employer, I've bought all the crap about don't don't believe in unions, and so don't give me all those good benefits anymore that, that unions have fought for. So with that, 
I think we've got a lot of work to do. We, each and every one of us, depend on public services, and our society, we all know, works a whole lot better when we are more equal, regardless of where we are. So let's, let's not let them win the war about making us feel uh, envious of each other. Let's make sure that we direct our spending where we need for appropriate programs that help out all of us. Thank you very much.